following up. Now we already have it. Okay, as normal, our Sunday morning um, announcements. First of all, please remember next week is Toys for Tots. Donna Charette and Bill Charette will be riding. So if you wish to donate anything towards that, there is a basket in the back. You're welcome to leave anything there. Tuesday night is council. There's a little bit of a change, folks. Listen up. Council, it will be at 6.30. No, sorry, it will not be at 6.30. It will be at 5.30. Okay. Next Sunday is another coffee hour. We ask to please bring finger foods and your fingers. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to eat them. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Um, I took inventory of our food pantry yesterday, and we're in desperate need of peanut butter. So if anybody would like to donate a jar of food peanut butter for this month, that would be great. Okay, and for those of you who are out there that are watching us on Facebook or YouTube that may not have heard that, Announcement, we are looking for peanut butter for the pantry. Which is what day? What day? Oh, yes. Pantry is the 27th of October, 3 to 6 p.m. Oh, I'm just reminded, little notes here, trunk or treat. That will occur on the 30th on Sunday. It will be from 3 to 5 in our parking lot. Everybody is welcome to come here, open up the trunk of their car, and treat the kids. If you're unable to do it and would like to sort of be involved in it, you're welcome to donate a bag of candy. And we certainly can use probably that. Last year we had at least, we had pretty close to 200 that came. So, again, any other announcements? Enjoy your worship. Just being supportive and being part of the family, as it were. 
It's very much appreciated. So I want to thank you. And thanks are a big part of today's message. You might even get to hear me sing. Maybe you won't. And maybe that would be a good thing. Anyway, thank you for joining us today here at Gilead Lutheran Church. Whether you're here in person or you're online, either way, you're worshiping with us. And we are blessed to have you with us. It's a miracle. It's multiple miracles. The waters of holy baptism have healed each one of us. The body and blood of Jesus and holy communion has made us clean. We have died with Christ and have been raised with him. And for all this, we have returned here to offer our thanks. And then from this place, we are sent out on our way rejoicing to share the good news. But first, let us begin our worship this morning with the need to confess our shortcomings and to seek God's forgiveness. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you of all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share with each other a sign of peace in whichever way you are able, doing so with the other person. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 549 in the Green Book. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven.
Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well and bond security we may with great hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture.
The word of God is never shackled or confined. Timothy is encouraged to proclaim that word of freedom is an honest and upright life, as well as in his teaching and preaching. A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, and he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they to our avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Here ends the reading from 2 Timothy. Black 
Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, and Giving Tuesday. Now we couldn't have that. But hey, if you think about it, why should any of us limit our giving of thanks to just one day or just one three-day weekend? I want you to think back to yesterday. Did anything of great magnitude happen in your life yesterday? If it did, hopefully that you gave thanks to God for it. But even if nothing spectacular happened, there were so many things to be thankful for. Did you feel the warmth of the sun? Yeah, the air was a little bit cool, so this time of year you feel that sun on you a little bit warmer. Maybe it was the deep blue skies. Or the trees that were in their blaze of color. And it couldn't help but give glory to God and God's creation. So thank you, Lord, for yesterday. Oh, and thank you, Lord, for today. And yes, thank you, Lord, for tomorrow, whatever it may bring. You know, it's hard not to notice that attitude of gratitude in today's readings. Just look at the way Psalm 11 or 111 stated. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. And in that Thanksgiving theme, we also have a couple of those attitude of gratitude stories in both the first reading and the gospel reading as well. In the Old Testament reading, we hear about this guy named Naaman, who, to say the least, is having more than a bad hair day. He's having a bad skin day. Now, one thing to note in the story is just how he came about to be healed. But who's the pivotal character in that story? Let's see. We have, according to the reading, Naaman, the commander of the army of the king of Aram. Okay, there's two right there. There's Naaman's wife, the king of Aram, and I already counted him. And speaking of kings, we have the king of Israel. And last but not least, the prophet Elisha. Oh, well, there's a couple of minor characters, like the one in the scripture that says was included in the story because, quote, the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. Funny. Turns out this minor character is a pivotal character because she is the one who suggests that there's someone in the Arameans captured territory who just might be able to help Naaman in his plight to be healed. So what happens? Naaman then goes, and this guy who is supposed to heal him, he doesn't even come out to greet him. Rather, he sends messengers to him with instructions as to what this, this needed to do. Needless to say, Naaman thinks that those instructions are a bit weird. Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. Okay, being snubbed, and then hearing the prescription, he's a little hot under the tuna, to say the least. Are not Abana and Farpar? The rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But who convinces him otherwise? His attendants. More supposedly minor characters. But they convinced Naaman this way. Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? He couldn't dismiss that kind of logic. And so he did as the prophet had directed him. 
and voila, he's healed. Ah, if we only had the faith of the size of a mustard seed, to borrow a verse from last week's gospel reading. Sometimes, though, people mistakenly equate, equate sickness with a lack of faith. But in this example, the healing was not a result of faith, but more despite its lack. Naaman is sick, frustrated, embarrassed, and Naaman. With the help of his servants, he finally exhibits just enough faith, although he might reject using that word, because despite his objections, all he wants is to be healed, and if that's what it takes, so be it. But sometimes, that is all it takes. And faith, he actually did have. Notice that saying at the end about the God of Israel. Go ahead. Take that leap of faith. It may sound strange to you. It may sound odd. It may sound weird. It may seem uncomfortable. But step out of your comfort zone. <coughs> Maybe we should stop trying to look for God in just the familiar places and begin to recognize God in the simplicity, like those blue skies and colorful trees that were all around us yesterday. You can do it today. At some point, just go outside, if you can, and stand in the midst of it and be silent. Go ahead and take all that beauty in and realize who is giving you this gift that fills all of your senses with a sense of awe and wonder of the realization <coughs> of what our God has done, what our God is doing, and what God can and will do, and then be thankful for all of it, big, small, and everywhere in between. Thank God. Really, thank God. And not just on the sunny days when everything is going good and something good just happened, but also on those dark and stormy days and nights as well. Which we all have, and unfortunately we will all have going forward in this earthly life. Here's the thing though. God will see us through those days and nights as well. Just remember this. You might have heard this particular Bible verse a few times. I'll just say it's verse 4, and you can figure out the rest. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Granted, there are times when that is a little difficult to give God thanks for what may be happening in your life. Reverend Dr. David Lewis realizes that, and so he reminds us, he says, quote, overwhelmed by grief or loss, for instance, some may have difficulty in giving voice to gratitude just now. And that's okay. It will come. Gratitude is not a command. It's an invitation. One God never tires of making, unquote. I recall coming across a story about a mother and son who lived in a forest. One day they went out. A tornado surprised them. The mother clung to a tree and tried to hold on to her son. But the swirling winds carried him into the sky. He was gone. The woman began to weep and pray, Please, O oh Lord, 
bring my back or bring back my boy. He's all I have. I'll do anything not to lose him. If you bring him back, I will serve him or serve you all my days. And just as suddenly, the boy toppled from the sky right at her feet, a bit messed up, but safe and sound. His mother joyfully brushes him off. Then she stopped for a moment, looked to the sky, and said, he had a hat, Lord. <laughs> My brothers and sisters in Christ, do we expect our miracles to come with little extra icing like that? What about those everyday miracles we experience? Do we even bother giving them a second thought? Or do we take that very moment to stop and thank God in so doing worship God? We hear that word, worship. Oh, that's what we do on Sunday mornings at 10.30 here at Gilead. Yeah, but that's not the extent of worship. In the reading from 2 Kings, as well as from the Gospel of Luke, we heard two very powerful stories about two outsiders being healed. Those stories also yielded a couple of interesting studies in the dynamics of entitlement and humility, most relevant in our times, if you think about it, in that there seems to be too much of one, that sense of entitlement, which in turn fosters that lack of the other, humility. You're either here or here. Let us pray to God that we may learn how to even those two things out. To walk humbly in His grace and to help make those everyday miracles happen. Not just for us who are gathered, but even for those people we sometimes think are not entitled. Like those foreigners that we heard in the meetings today. For we are all God's children. Period. Martin Luther was once asked to describe the nature of true worship. His answer, the tenth leper turning back and thanking God. Are we like that tenth leper? Or are we like the other 90% of them that just went back to their normal routines instead of making sure that we praise God from whom all blessings flow? No, that's not a song to you. Don't, don't worry about it, Margie. One's coming up, though. Indeed, that is something to think about. So when was the last time that you stopped and thanked God? And not for something big either, but just stopped and thanked God. Thanks be to God, always and all days. And not just in Canada tomorrow or next month here in the U.S., but rather an ongoing attitude of gratitude for all that we have been blessed with. We sometimes take those things for granted. But realize what we all have been blessed with. They may be different things, but yes, we have been blessed. And once you realize that, then we can share a blessing with others. And like I said before, it's not limited to sitting in the pews here at church or sitting around the house listening to this message online. But keep in mind those who were healed, which we heard about in today's reading, who were quote-unquote outsiders. Who maybe are the outsiders in our lives that are in the need of healing of some kind? Do we think about 
like that? Or do we think about that and not know what to do? Well, the answer is start with prayer and listen to what God tells you. But don't stop there. The thing is, once you listen to what God says, then go and act on it. It's fairly easy. And you can do it. If you but trust God to guide you. There is the song to it. Amen. Indeed, our hymn of the day is number 453 <coughs> in the Green Book. Yes, indeed. If you but trust in God to guide you.
humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. I will end each petition with, hear us, O God, please respond with, your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, and deacons, and synodically authorized ministers. Inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Hear us, O oh God. Mighty God, we give you thanks for all those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, religion, or sexual identity. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer, especially those who are listed in their bulletin, as well as those who are in our thoughts at this moment. Hear us, O oh God. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Arise, O oh God, of all understanding and ever-present love. You come to us in empathy, accompany all who are lonely, and for those dealing with addictions of any kind, as well as who find themselves in abusive relationships through no fault of their own. And for all those feeling abandoned in any way, and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited, and open, our, open us to their cries. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Loving God, we remember those who called this land their ancestral homeland including the Mohican, Mohawk, and Skatecoat nations. Bless them in this, our time, and bring them justice. Hear us, O God. All-knowing God, we now lift up to you in silence those hopes and concerns, the joys and sorrows that you alone can see written upon our hearts at this moment. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us, Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us unto your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us, And with grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And while we prepare ourselves for Holy Communion, and as, an, as your offering was brought forward in a few moments, an offering of praise and worship from our choir, and we thank you for your ongoing support.
Father, we offer the joy and thanksgiving which we have heard sitting in us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. We receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.